And in the red corner, weighing in at 500 pounds from the dirty, dirty, the problem solver, Ashi Knuckles. What's happening, boxing fans? It's your boy, Ashy Knuckles. Ready to get my take on a couple of things in the sport of boxing. Uh, first, let's talk about the event that's happening this weekend. Um, hot prospect, Adrian the Problem Broner. Uh, let's talk about him first. Phenomenal talent. Phenomenal talent. He was a great amateur. All the guys from down here, all the fighters down here, they know who he is. Um, he's fought in Houston before. I've covered... Uh, an event with him on the undercard and you know he was he was receiving a lot of criticism for the fight against Ponce de Leon and, and if you've been around the sport of boxing uh, the more talented a fighter is the more criticism he's going to receive that's just part of the game you know uh, you got to be able to deal with the good press and the bad press um, one thing these guys got to understand as young fighters is if the press whether they're talking bad about you or they're talking good about you that means you are relevant if they're not saying anything about you, you're nobody. So that's one thing I think as a young fighter, he's going to learn to understand about the game of boxing. The press will never be happy with you. You know, every accomplishment that you attain in the sport of boxing, they'll always find something wrong with it. So you take it as it, as it goes, you know. And, 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 you know, Adrian is a very confident dude. That's one thing I like about this guy. Um, as a confident dude, you only have one answer for those guys in the press who have anything to say negative about you. All you got to tell them is, who, who's going to beat me? Who's going to beat me? You can say what you want. You can write what you want. But who's going to beat me? Put them in front of me. I'm not scared. You know I'm not running. Let's have it. And, and you leave it at that. You let them write what they, write they want to write because that's their profession. But when it comes to what happens inside the square circle, only Mr. Broner can dictate what goes on in that fight. And like I say, he's a very confident dude. Um, I remember covering uh, a fight down here. Juan Diaz versus Paul Malignaggi. And on that undercard, you know, Adrian Broner, I remember at the weigh-in, man. Uh, this guy, Adrian, man. So, I mean, I think he's at the point right now where it's, it really don't matter who y'all put in front of him. I think he really you know believes he's gonna beat whoever it is and i mean how can you blame the guy you know when you have over 300 300 amateur fights and um over 280 of it is all wins you know you know damn near 300 wins you know i mean you should be confident a guy with that type of record that type of outstanding record one thing is for sure you don't have to teach him how to fight he knows how to fight okay um, at that weigh-in, man, he's looking at his opponent, and all of a sudden, man, you just see him just break out laughing at him, man, right in his face, just bust out laughing. Then he turns and faces the camera people. You know, I'm in the I'm in the press. I'm taking pictures and videotaping it, and uh, he's just still laughing, like, man, y'all got y'all got to be serious. This guy, and you know, guys that cocky, most people want to see him lose. I really don't care, but uh, most people want to see him lose, but. In the ring, knock the dude out in the first round. And, and people wonder why guys like this get an opportunity to showcase their talent on HBO. It's because when he's on the untelevised portion of an HBO event, he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's getting these guys out of there ASAP. I mean, when you look at his skill set, it has tremendous hand speed, power in both hands. Uh, he, to me, in my opinion, he's a little left-hand dominant, but he wraps guys with that left hand. And uh, that right hand, I think, is probably his best punch, but he don't throw as much, throw it as much as he throw the left hand. I think he really finds a home for that left hook. Um, he likes to catch guys coming in with it. And I think because of that, he may be a little bit too tentative sometimes in the ring, uh, playing the counterpunch role because he's very good at it. But, you know, when you're in the audience, think, you know, watching it from a fan's perspective, you will start to hear a lot of boos because... You know, the people that you're, that he's fighting, they know. They know you got power. They know your left hand is a beast. So they're, not, they're a little hesitant to come at you. In times like that, I think as a young fighter, he's going to have to learn that, you know, sometimes you got to dictate, you know. Don't wait on him because the type of skills he got is phenomenal. I, I know I said that previously, but I'll elaborate. 
The dude's reflexes, man, are unbelievable. So my message to Adrian would be to, it's okay to go ahead and dictate behind that jab because even if they try to counter you, your reflexes are so good that they're going to miss anyway and you're still going to land that big left hook. Now, my in my opinion, I think uh, the only thing I see in this game, and you know, if he ever watches this video, I'm sure, you know, he probably like, you know, well, who cares what this guy thinks? That's fine. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to show nobody up, and I definitely am not trying to criticize uh, a young fighter so young in his game, you know, about to, about to fight for his first world title. But in my opinion, that left hook is a little wide, you know, and I think he relies on that counter left hook a little bit too much. And it's a reason why. Usually when he lands it, deuces. You know, he usually put the guy on his butt, on his back like a dead roach, you know, looking at the lights, you know, and, you know, put on spectacular knockouts like he's accustomed to doing. I understand completely. But I've seen so much videotape on Adrian to know that that half step back with the left hook is where he's most successful. Because I think with that half, taking that half step back, he places that left hook a little bit better. And when he placed that left hook, man, you can best believe those guys feel it. And most times or not, they drop, you know. But he don't even need to throw the left hook because the right is a beast. The boy is very talented. And like I said, the writers, they've criticized this guy. I mean, with less than 23 fights, he was fighting seasoned veterans. And they're still not giving this guy a break. But they'll let a guy like, you know, Canelo fight bum after bum. And they won't say anything bad about him because he's, he's this humongous ticket seller. And I'm not going to criticize Canelo either, but I just want to bring to you the inconsistencies that happen in the sport of boxing in terms of the media. They're not right, and the criteria is ever-changing. And that's just the way it is. That's the way it's going to be. And it's been like that. They pick and choose who their favorites are, and they draw up their own different criteria depending on, on who the fighter is. That's why I don't need the media to tell me who's hot. This boy, is, he's pretty doggone good. Like I said, everybody knows who he is. And I know y'all have heard the cliche of uh, it's a small world, but in the boxing world, the world is even smaller. Everybody know, knows who everybody is, especially if a guy has a, a lights out amateur career. You know, you know guys from the amateur. You've seen them. So guys know who Adrian is and you know what he's going to do in this sport of boxing. And you know where his, why his confidence is at an all time high because he know he's pretty damn good. And in his fight with Vicente Rodriguez, you know, out uh, definitely it wasn't the fight we wanted to see. I think the matchup with Ricky Burns would have been great, but y'all saw what happened. Ricky Burns decided to go up and wait and fight a title shot against Michael Cassidis, a well-known lightweight fighter, strong fighter. Now, I'm not going to say who was ducking who. You know it wasn't Adrian Broner ducking nobody. He was, he was ready for the fight, and even he didn't even say Ricky Burns ducked me. You know, he could have said that, but you know, if he would have said that, he would have received so much criticism just for speaking his mind. That's the way it is in the sport of boxing. You know, it, it's crazy. But like a true professional, you know, he recognized that the guy made a decision that, that was best for him in his, in his career. And he went for it. And he went up and weighed. He fought Michael Cassidy's and it looked pretty doggone good. And Ricky Burns is a pretty good fighter, really good boxer. Boxes on the move, protects himself fairly well. He can be a little flat-footed at times, but he knows how to use the ring, know how to protect himself, and ultimately he keeps being successful. So kudos to him, and maybe they will match up in the future one day. But being of the fact that he pulled out, you know, it's not like they just inputted a bum in there just to give this guy, Adrian Broner, an easy opponent. It's not like he asked for that. But when you're trying to look for guys to fill a slot, you know, the date and venue are already set in stone. And when you're call, calling around looking for an opponent, getting one in the sanction of the organization to approve an opponent for a title shot has to be a, a, a guy uh, that's legitimately winning and a guy who doesn't have a fight schedule, uh, contractual uh, obligations to a fight that's scheduled, and a guy that can ultimately make weight in time for the fight. Um, there you have Vicente Rodriguez. And Vicente Rodriguez, you know, it's not like he's just a bad, terrible fighter, but he's a bit slow, a bit of a plotter, um, flat-footed, no doubt. But he has a pretty decent punch, you know, and he goes to the body pretty, pretty decent too. And you know what? Will it be a solid test? What is a solid test when you have over 300 amateur fights, you know? 
but do you just throw Adrian Broner in there with the best of the best right now? You know, probably his handlers and managers probably don't think so, but in a fighter's mindset, they're ready to fight anytime, anybody at the drop of a hat. You know? So, what I expect to see this weekend, I expect to see Adrian doing the same old things. Uh, I think he's going to be a little bit more aggressive, uh, being of the fact that he's fighting in front of his hometown. Uh, his first world title shot, I think he's looking to put on a performance. He's a guy that likes attention. And uh, I think as far as uh, what he's going to become as a professional, you may be looking at the next star boxing. Now, like I said, I know people already have thrown a book at this guy. You want to call him this, call him that, whatever. I know how the hatred goes on the Internet, you know, especially when it comes to Twitter. They'll talk bad about you. I know they even play the race card time and time again, but, you know, that's just the nature of boxing fans. You know, boxing fans are fickle, you know, kind of like the weather. And um, it just, you know, the sky's the limit in my opinion. And like I said, I think if he puts those skills on display and dictate the pace of the fight and be a little bit more aggressive early, I think he'll find himself in a more eye-appealing fight as far as the fans are concerned. But ultimately, he is the fighter. He has to dictate what happens in the ring so he can continue to get W's and try to look good while doing so. But as you can see, when the video started, I was kind of mocking his uh, ring gestures when in the ring. But we all know boxing is not just a sport. It's a business. And in this business, you have to learn how to sell yourself to the public if you want to put asses in the seats. Because when you can do that, that's when the networks become interested, especially if you keep on winning. And winning is what he what he does. Now with the brush, the dude brushing his hair, and Adrian coming to the ring doing the Mr. Miyagi or the the uh, the Dougie or whatever it is he's doing, and then he ends the fight in knockouts. Look, let me tell you something. It may be silly, you know. It is some silly. I, I laughed the first time I ever saw it, but you know what? It's silly enough to work. It's silly enough to work. And the reason why I say this is it's his own individual hook. You know, it makes him who he is. It identifies him amongst every other fighter that's out there. And if he's in these fights and knockouts, he can't help but to attract the masses to his fights. Because just like in baseball, the home run, everybody loves the home run, even people who don't even follow baseball. In boxing, everybody loves the knockout punch. So, and due to the fact he has power in both hands and he has skills, it can only add to a star thus making his star shine a little brighter and you never know we may have a future star on our hands so i just want to tell you i'll look out for adrian broner he has a fight this week on, on hbo and um sky's the limit let's see what he does this weekend and you know we'll further assess kudos to him i don't knock any fighter good luck and um we'll see what happens with the problem but ultimately 21 people have he's been a problem for 21 people and uh, I don't think he should change anything about his game except, you know, just dictate the pace sometimes. Sometimes just don't wait, you know, because that's when you start hearing the boos. And, you know, boxing fans are impatient, especially if they spent their money, you know. And no fighter likes to be criticized. But once you ask the public to pay to watch you fight, you're open for criticism. And that's a message, message to all young fighters out there. Once you ask the public to pay... To see you fight, you're open for criticism. It doesn't mean the criticism is fair. Boxing is just not fair. That's just the way it is. But all you got to do is close your ears to it or use it as motivation and keep winning. Because if you keep winning, you keep moving forward. So kudos to the problem. Let's see what you do this weekend. Good luck. Now, the other fight is um, Canelo Centron. Hey, I don't really have much to say about this. Um... I said what I was going to say about this fight on the radio this past Wednesday. Uh, it's time for Canelo to step up. And Centron, in my opinion, I have no knock on Centron. He's a nice guy. I've talked to him plenty of times in the gym, seen him spar, seen him train, and things of that nature. But um, he's not coming off the most stellar performances of his career. In boxing, you know, you're only as good as your last fight. His last fight, he looked he looked so-so against Antoine Smith, but before then, when he fought Carlos Molina, he didn't look too hot. Looked like a one-two fighter, jab-jab right hand. And um, even though that right hand is a missile, and I've seen him just uh, freeze guys with that right hand, you know, when, when the other the guys who you're fighting, you know, they have a team as well. 
and their team, if their team is halfway decent, they're going to look at that videotape and see what you're doing in the ring and make adjustments just in case you try that again on fight night. And with a guy like Canelo, you cannot be a one-trick pony. You can't be jab, jab, right hand because he's really skillful. You know, he has fast hands. He set up great combinations, goes to the body very well. Um, doesn't move his head a bit much, and he can be a bit stiff, but he has some decent pop. And if he catches slipping, it may be night-night for him. Now, like I said, I think he should do very well in this fight. So, basically, the only knock I have on Canelo, um, other than not fighting the best available competition in his weight division, is um, he don't move his head too much and he's a bit stiff. Um, and, and to add on to that, he's a very slow start. I could think of many guys who start slow and it didn't work out for them. If I was Centron, I'd jump right on him as soon as the bell rang and look to hurt him like Jose Miguel Cotto did. And Jose Miguel Cotto has never really been thought of as a phenomenal puncher at any weight division above 135 pounds. And I think he fought him at welterweight. He may even fought him at a, a, a division higher than welterweight, and he hurt him in the first round. And uh, if he can hurt Canelo, then I'm sure Centron should be able to freeze him. You know, and that would be my, my goal if I was in Tron. Hop right on him because he, he has a tendency to wait. You know, he doesn't come out and just start dictating. He doesn't come out and just start establishing a solid jab. You know, it's like, to me, you know, every most fighters uh, use the first round to fill, or opponent, fill their opponent out. Some people are better than others at it. You know, some people adapt to their opponent more quickly than others. Canelo's not like that. It usually takes him a round or two. To really get going and I think that can be a, a big time flaw especially at the championship level so we'll see what happens with that ultimately if he beats Centron which I think he will do um, he needs to fight somebody I mean let I mean let's let's be for real you didn't deserve the WBC title shot to begin with the guy he fought wasn't even a hundred fifty four pounder okay and you just leapfrog guys like Von S, leapfrog guys like Alfred Angulo and other guys that were in the top five of that uh, division. And you're still not even facing any, any of those guys. And we already know how the politics of boxing goes. The WBC is going to have all the guys in the top five beat the crap out of each other before Canelo will even have, have to face one of them. And that's I think that's ridiculous. And to make it more ridiculous, James Kirkland knocks out Alfred Angulo and Alfred Angulo is ranked number one in the in the WBC and James Kirkland is ranked 15. Please tell me that's not politics at work. Please tell me that somebody didn't go to Jose Suleiman with a bag of money and, and have, the, have these ratings fixed because there's no way you can explain that to me. There's no way you can explain that to the boxing public. But if you've been around boxing, you know it, it is what it is. It's all about the almighty dollar. You know, and, you know, whatever. We, we've seen it plenty of times before. But the boxing public know who the real champs are in each division. And I'm sorry, Mr. Cinnamon, you're not the champion of that division. You just have a belt. Part of being champion is to defend. And you're defending against guys who don't deserve a title shot. But I don't want to criticize Centron for getting another opportunity. He's getting it on name recognition alone on what he's accomplished in the sport of boxing and what he is as a former welterweight champ and he's had some great moments in his career and he has one more opportunity and you don't want to be a stepping stone for young fighters to to build their name off of Centron so I hope you really do do something with this with this opportunity and granted if you lose at least make it a halfway decent fight so you can resurrect your career somehow um, because I think this is it. If he doesn't win, I think this is it for him. Um, that would be a disaster in, in, in his regard. But, you know, we'll see what happens. I heard he's in great shape. You know, we'll see what, what's going on with that. But uh, as far as Canelo, sky's the limit for that guy. I know I'm a little bit critical of him because of the recent things that's been happening on behalf of Team Canelo and, you know, his promotional company or whatnot. But the guy does have talent. We, we would just like to see it against somebody and not some old timer or some guy that has too many ring wars 
or guys who just don't belong at that weight or guys who just don't even belong in the ring with you. And, you know, until then, you know, there's always going to be some criticism. But I guess as long as you're selling tickets and bringing money to your to your team and the people that represent you and, of course, you're a sanctioning organization, you'll always be able to get fights. And, you know, that can be disastrous for you because by the time you do face somebody with a pulse, it could spell the undoing for you. So uh, let's get him stepped up. You know, let's increase the caliber of opponents. And we'll see what happens with Mr. Canelo if he can continue the legacy, the boxing rich heritage uh, of, of Mexico. Mexico's boxing rich heritage. Let's see if he can be the very next Mexican great. Um, the way people write about him and talk about him, they definitely think so. So we'll only see in the future. But until then, we'll just have to look at it on, on a fight by fight schedule. And until next time, it's your boy Ash. You got comments? Leave it, and you know, we'll chop it up. Till next time, I'm a holler. Peace.